Moving on from boiling, we're now going to be discussing uh, freezing and melting, which are the two other typical phase changes. Now, freezing is the change of a liquid to a solid. But in this process, it also releases some energy as heat. And we can't, if you'll remember from the law of conservation of energy, just get rid of energy, so we have to add it onto the side of the reaction with the solid. And for each substance, this uh, happens at a specified freezing point. And that is the temperature at normal atmospheric pressure, so 1 atm or 101.3 kilopascals. And that is the pressure at which liquid can change to solid and begin to release energy. Now it's important to note that at this freezing point, the temperature of both the solid and the liquid is the same. However, this energy that is lost was potential energy stored in uh, intermolecular bonds, if you will, between the liquid molecules, and that is released as heat to the environment. Now just as energy is released when a material is freezing, similarly, if you add energy, as I'm sure you know if you've heated up ice with your hands, then you can get a solid turning back into a liquid, which is why this is a reversible reaction. Thus, it can reach an equilibrium much like the condensation and evaporation we discussed in a previous video with the alcohol. Now in a system where you have both the solid and the liquid, like let's say a cool glass of water, the temperature will remain constant at zero degrees Celsius, that is the freezing and melting point at standard pressure. Throughout the whole reaction while this ice is melting and releasing energy. It is only after the ice is completely gone and you're left with a glass of water that added energy from the environment will begin to raise the temperature of the water. And just as we talked about the energy required to overcome intermolecular forces in a liquid in order to boil in the last video, similarly there is a property of all substances that is the molar enthalpy of fusion. And this is a measure of the energy that is absorbed when a solid plus this energy transforms into a liquid. It's a measure of the energy that is added in the form of potential energy separating the various molecules from one another once they're in a liquid state. And as we just discussed, this whole reaction takes place at a constant temperature. So while you still have any solid left, if you're adding in energy to the reaction, then what you're doing is uh, adding energy according to the molar enthalpy of fusion. That is, you're adding to the potential energy between molecules, thus creating a liquid. However, this liquid is still at the melting freezing point of this material. You're not adding energy to increase the kinetic energy and thus increase the temperature. You're adding energy and increasing the potential energy, and that is what the molar enthalpy of fusion is all about. It is simply a measure of this energy in the form of heat required to melt one mole of this substance. And that heat doesn't go into temperature. Remember, it goes into potential energy. We're going to skip over sublimation and deposition really quick because we won't be using those for most of this course. Uh, however, we're going to be moving on now to phase diagrams, one of which I have over to the right. And this one is for just regular water. And basically what a phase diagram does is it shows you the points at which a material, for example water, can undergo a phase change at given temperatures 
and pressures. For example, you'll notice that below 0.06 atm and 0.01 degrees Celsius, along this line here, the water goes from water vapor, which we have over here in the gray, straight to ice, which we have over here in the white, and vice versa. This is the point at which sublimation and deposition happen. Similarly, these lines show where boiling and condensing happen, as well as the freezing and melting. Basically all it is is a plot of the temperatures and pressures at which a certain material undergoes phase changes. Now the point at which these three lines meet, right here, which I'll mark with a big blue circle, is what is known as the triple point. And this is a very interesting point of temperature and pressure because this is where both, or all three rather, of the liquid, solid, and gas states can coexist. So you can have, you know, ice and water and water vapor all existing at 0.06 atm and 0.01 degrees Celsius. Now I'm not going to go into numerical detail about this whole chart, but I'm going to point out one or two more important points, the first of which is up here in the very upper right. This is what is known as the critical point, and this is the temperature, 374 right here, and pressure, 225 atm, above which water cannot exist in the liquid form. There's simply too much energy, the molecules bounce around too quickly in various directions for it to exist as a liquid.